lesson four. These thoughts do not mean anything. They are like the things I see in this room, on this street, from this window, in this place. This is a nature exercise, and will be repeated from time to time in somewhat different form. The aim here is to train you in the first steps toward the goal of separating the meaningless from the meaningful. Be really aware of unhappy thoughts, use them as subjects for the idea. Do not, however, select only the thoughts you think are bad. You will find, if you train yourself to look at your thoughts, that they represent such a mixture that, in a sense, none of them can be called good or bad. This is why they do not mean anything. T is a first attempt in the long-range purpose of learning to see the meaningless as outside you, and the meaningful within. It is also the beginning of training your mind to recognize what is the same and what is date. My mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. The one holy true thought one can hold about the past is that it is not here. To think about it at all is therefore to think about illusions. The purpose of the exercises for today is to begin to train your mind to recognize when it is not really thinking at all. While thoughtless ideas preoccupy your mind, the truth is blocked. Your mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. This idea is, of course, the reason why you see only the past. No one really sees anything. He sees only his thoughts projected outward. The misconception about time from which your seeing suffers. Your mind cannot grasp the present, which is the only time there is. It therefore cannot understand time, and cannot, in fact, understand anything. The only holy true thought one can hold about the past is that it is not here. To think about it at all is therefore to think about delusions. Very few minds have realized what is actually entailed in picturing the past or in anticipating the future. The mind is actually blank when it does this, because it is not really thinking about anything. The purpose of the exercises for today is to be good when it is not really thinking at all. While thoughtless ideas preoccupy your mind, the truth is blocked. Recognizing that your mind has been merely blank, rather than believing that it is filled with real ideas, is the first step to opening the way to I have no neutral thoughts. The idea for today is a beginning step in dispelling the belief that your thoughts have no effect. Everything you see is the result of your thoughts. There is no exception to this fact. Thoughts are not big or little, powerful or weak. They are merely true or false thoughts. Everything you see is the result of your thoughts. There is no exception to this fact. Thoughts are not big or little, powerful or weak. They are merely true or false. Those that are true create their own likeness. Those that are false make theirs. There is no more self-contradictory concept than that of idle thoughts. What gives rise to the perception of a whole world in every thought you have contributes to truth or to illusion. Either it extends the truth or it multiplies illusions. Recognize that every thought you have brings either peace or war, either love or fear. A neutral result is impossible because a neutral thought is impossible. I can escape from the world I see by giving up attack thoughts. The idea for today contains the only way out of fear that will ever succeed. Nothing else will work. Everything else is meaningless. But this way cannot fail. Every thought you have makes up some segment of the world you see. The idea for today contains the only way out of fear that will ever succeed. Nothing else will work. Everything else is meaningless. But this way cannot fail. Every thought you have makes up some segment of the world you see. It is with your thoughts, then, that we must work. If your perception of the world is to be changed you are not trapped in the world you see, because its cause can be changed. This change requires, first, that the cause be identified and then let go, so that it can be replaced. I do not perceive my own best interests. If you realize that you do not perceive your own best interests, you could be taught what they are. But in the presence of your conviction that you do know what they are, you cannot learn. 
The idea for today is a step toward opening your mind so that learning can begin. I do not pursue my own best interests. In no situation that arises do you realize the outcome that would make you happy. Therefore, you have no guide to appropriate action, and no way of judging the result. What you do is determined by your perception of the situation, and it is inevitable, then, that you will not serve your own best interests. Yet they are your only goal in any situation which is correctly perceived. Otherwise, you will not recognize what six. They are. Let me be still and listen to the truth. Hear them not. Be still today and listen to the truth. Go past all things which do not speak of him who holds your happiness within his hand, held out to you in welcome and in love. Hear only him today, and do not wait to reach him longer. Hear one voice today. And hear your father speak to you through his appointed voice which silences the thunder of the meaningless, and shows the way to peace to those who cannot see. Be still today and listen to the truth. Be not deceived by voices of the dead, which tell you they have found the source of life and offer it to you for your belief. Attend them not, but listen to the truth. Be not afraid today to circumvent the voices of the world. Walk lightly past their meaningless persuasion. Hear them not. Be still today and listen to the truth. Go past all things which do not speak of him who holds them in his hand, held out to you in welcome and in love. Hear only him today, and do not wait to reach him longer. Hear one voice there is no love but God's. He will shine through your idle thoughts today, and help you understand the truth of love. In loving gentleness he will abide with you, as you allow his voice to teach love's meaning to your clean and open mind. You think that different kinds of love are possible. Perhaps you think there is a kind of love for this, a kind for that, a way of loving one, another way of loving still another. Love is one. It has no separate parts and no degrees, no kinds nor levels, no divergencies and no distinctions. It is like itself, unchanged throughout. It never alters with a person or a circumstance. It is the heart of God, and also of His Son. Love's meaning is obscure to anyone who thinks that love can change. He does not see that changing love must be impossible. And thus he thinks that he can love at times and hate at other times. He also thinks that love can be bestowed on one, and yet remain itself although it is withheld from others. To believe these things of love is not to understand it. If it could make such distinctions, it would have to judge between the righteous and the sinner, and perceive the Son of God in separate parts. Love cannot judge. As it is one itself, it looks on all as one. Its meaning lies in oneness and it must elude the mind that thinks of it as there partial no love and God's, and all of love is his. There is no other principle that rules where love is not. Love is a law without an opposite. Its wholeness is the power holding everything as one, a link between the Father and the Son which holds them both forever thirty. It is impossible to see two worlds. He will shine through your idle thoughts today, and help you understand the truth of love. In loving gentleness he will abide with you, as you allow his voice to teach love's meaning to your clean and open mind. It is impossible to see two worlds which have no overlap of any kind. See for the one, the other disappears, but one remains, they are the range of joy.
choice be and with your decision can I go through real and the unreal are all there are to choose between uh, nothing more than these Today we will attempt no compromise where none is possible. The world you see is proof you have already made a choice as all embracing as it's opposite. What we would learn today is more than just the lesson that you cannot see two worlds. It also teaches that the one you see is quite consistent from the point of view from which you see it. It is all a piece because it stems from one emotion. And reflects its source in everything you see. 194. I place the future in the hands of God. What worry can beset the one who gives his future to the loving hands of God? What can he suffer? What can cause him pain, or bring experience of loss to him? What can he fear? And what can he regard except with love? For he who has escaped all for all future pain has found his way to present peace and certainty of care. The world can never threaten. Holds your future as he holds your past and present. They are one to him, and so they should be one to you. The temporal progression still seems real, and so you are not asked to understand the lack of sequence really found in time. You are but asked to let the future go and place it in God's hands. And you will see by your experience that you have laid the past and present in his hands as well, because the past will punish you no more, and future dread will now be meaningless. Release the future, for the past is gone, and what is present, freed from its bequest of grief and misery, of pain and loss, becomes the instant in which time escapes the bondage of illusions where it runs its pitiless and is each instant which was slave to time transformed into a holy instant when the light that was kept hidden in God's Son is free to bless the world. Now is he free, and all his glory shines upon a world made free with him to show daily for. I can elect to change all thoughts that hurt. The way I change all thoughts that hurt is to be willing to take these thoughts to the Holy Spirit to receive the correction in my perception. All hurt and pain, loss and guilt, all suffering of any kind comes from joining with the ego's thought system. 284. I can elect to change all thoughts that hurt. Loss is not loss when properly perceived. Pain is impossible. There is no grief with any cause at all and suffering of any kind is nothing but a dream. This is the truth, at first to be but said and then repeated many times, and next to be accepted as but partly true, with many rather than to be considered seriously more and more, and finally accepted as the truth. I can elect to change all thoughts that hurt. And I would go beyond these words today, and past all reservations, and arrive at full acceptance of the truth in them, 